Good morning once again. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in for another bite-sized thought in our One Word Prayer series. Uh, how are you doing today? Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed the thoughts that we've had so far this week. I hope that they've opened up uh, different ways for you to connect with God and uh, to invite Him into your week, whatever that might entail, uh, on the good days and the bad days. That is the whole point of this. And today's one word uh, that we're going to think about isn't even a word, uh, so I'm making it even easier than normal. Uh, because this week we've thought about the Father and Abba and what that means, and we thought about Jesus, the Son, and you'll know if you've been in church any length of time, there is a third member of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. But the whole idea of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three in one, one that is three, um, it's just confusing, um, to be honest. Um, and and also, we're not really sure what to do with it. Apart from it being something that we don't really get, um, we're not really sure what difference that makes. And what I found, um, and I'm probably on the verge of being a heretic at some point in this, this thought, uh, because when you talk about the Trinity, it's always easy to slip up and emphasise one thing and not emphasise something else enough, and someone will take issue with it. Um, I always find comfort that this guy, Augustine, who was like the original theologian, this guy who thought deeply about God, said, um, if you understand it, then it's not God that you understand. And I've always taken comfort from that. If you get it, if you can say, I finally solved it, I understand, then it's not God that you can be talking about. He's beyond us and outside of our realm of thinking. And so we're always clutching at straws. We're trying to put language to something that's indescribable. But the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, um, one of the ways that that impacts us is through prayer. One of the ways that, that we really see that coming to, to the fore and making a difference is in the way we pray in the way we pray to Abba, our Father, and what that means to us, in the way we pray to Jesus, our Saviour, the Son, the one we follow and walk with, and, and what that means to us, and also the Holy Spirit. Now, the Hope Bible doesn't have any examples of praying to the Spirit. It doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong, but there aren't many examples. But one of the things it does teach is that when we come to God in prayer, there are times where we run out of words, where even one word is too much, that we have nothing to say we don't know how to start, we don't know how to end, we don't know what to ask, we don't know what to praise him for, we don't know what to thank him for, we don't know what to say wow over, we don't know how to, to, to ask questions, we don't know how to receive answers, and there are times where we are literally at a loss for what to say. And that's where today's one word comes in, which isn't really a word, but the word I want to share is silence. Because that sometimes is your most powerful prayer. And today, actually, what I want to suggest is that your most perfect prayer that you ever prayed wasn't when you prayed with words. It was when you came and you were silent. Because in the book of Romans, here's, it says this, that when you do not know what to say, when you're crying out and, and you have nothing that comes out, that the Holy Spirit prays for you. That he takes the desires and the groans and the aches of your heart and presents them to God. It translates them. And he takes them to God and lays them before him and says, here's what they need. Which I find incredibly humbling and comforting. That my most eloquent prayer was nothing compared to the prayer that the Holy Spirit prays when I say nothing. And it's comforting because when I have nothing to say, I am still praying. When I am simply silent and at a loss. The Holy Spirit comes and does the work that I struggle to do by myself. This means that for some of you, this may be the starting point of your new prayer life. And it doesn't start with words. It doesn't start with, with an example for you to follow word by word. It starts with you simply being silent and allowing the Holy Spirit to take your groans, take your aches, take your frustrations and your concerns and to bring them to your Father and he promises to do that perfectly. He promises to do it accurately. And he promises to do it when you have nothing left to say but silence. And for some of you, that's that may be the biggest help today. We're not going to pray to close as we have before. I'm simply going to invite you to find a spot in your day, to find a moment, perhaps even now, while you have the time, to just be silent. And as you do that, you may be thinking certain things or you may not be able to think of anything. You may simply want to invite the Holy Spirit as you start and say, Holy Spirit, take what I don't know what to say and translate it. 
Holy Spirit, please take my unspoken prayers and lift them to heaven. And then you don't need to do anything else, but just be still. You may also want to, as you do that, pray, Holy Spirit, take my prayers and speak to me what I need to know. The Holy Spirit will take your prayers to God, but he may also want to speak answers. He may want to speak truth. He may want to show you something. He may want to put his finger on something. He may want to nudge you in a certain area or just prod you in a certain way that leads you into a next step or a different thought pattern or something that you can put into words. He may want to do that and say, don't be closed off to that. Simply because you're being silent doesn't mean that he's going to be silent. He may want to speak louder than he's ever spoken before and address something that hasn't been addressed for a while, an area that you've left um, neglected, Uh, Or he may just want to encourage you. He may want to just remind you of who you are. He may want to take these things that we talk about being a child of God and being loved and being forgiven, which is all very well hearing it from me, but he may want to say it himself because there's nothing better than hearing those things from the voice of God himself. And so today, that's, that's my encouragement to you. Your word for today is not a word. It's simply silence. And as you do, here's the good news. You will be praying your most perfect prayer because it won't be you praying it. The Holy Spirit will take everything that God needs to know and he will take it and present it and it will be heard at the throne of God. And from there you can expect a response. You can expect the grace that you need, the strength that you need and the encouragement that you need in many forms in different ways. So I'm just going to pause. I'm just going to say one line of a prayer And then the video will stop and you'll have a chance just to be still, just to be silent. In fact, I think I'll go to a black screen. So the video is still playing. So you've still got that time if you need that. You don't scroll down to the next thing or move on. Just the time to pause and to be silent and allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. And so Holy Spirit, we ask that you would come now. You would take our prayers, our groans and our aches, and you would transform them into eloquent prayers to our Father that they would be heard. And you ask that, we ask that you'd help us to hear your response, whatever you want to say now, in the silence. We're listening. Amen.